Well, one of the positions that Mikel Arteta is really lacking depth in is the right attacking midfield position. All a right winger, all a right forward. You can refer to him as you want, depending on the system that Ateta plays. At the beginning of the season, Ateta was playing with a 4-2-3-1 and Bukayo Saka was playing that position and was playing as a right attacking midfield. Then he shifted to a 4-3-3. Now he's playing as a right forward. That is Bukayo Saka, a left-footed player playing on the right attacking side of the midfield that is the position or that's the player that Mikel Ateta is really looking for and Arsenal have been searching for such a player for a very very long time that's why during the summer of 2022 they were linked to very many players <clears throat> Zegrova, Pedro Neto, Leroy Sen, um, which other player? Marco Asensio uh, which other, which other left-footed players are the ones I'm talking about. They were linked to Arsenal. Lucas Paqueta is another one that was linked to Arsenal who is left-footed and playing off that side. Even <coughs> Gerard Bowen of Newcastle, sorry, of West Ham, plays with the left foot and plays into that position. And lastly, it was Moussa Diabe, who even the money, the owner of Arsenal had given them green light to go on and really get the deal done. But he was going in for 60 million euros. That's Moussa Dembele. And they are looking at him as one of those players that can come in and act as a backup of Bokayo Saka. Plate goal, one of the most, the most <coughs> concrete journalists in German football has gone ahead and really broken a story about Arsenal's interest in Moussa Diabe. Fabrizio Romano has gone ahead to add more to that and now you know that this is the guy that Mikel Ateta has identified as a Bukayo Saka backup at Arsenal. Welcome to Rokani Media Football. How are you guys and where are you watching us from? Good evening and where are you watching us from? Smash the like button, comment and share. If at all you're watching us for the very first time, lower right bottom corner, that's the place to be. Smash the black button that has the word subscribe. After smashing it, hit the notification bell that will enable you get notified every time I upload a video on this channel. Rock and David is my name and let's see close to 200 likes smashed onto this video. Now, before I get into other stories, allow me to let you know that we are talking about Nwaneri, the 15-year-old high-rated prospect full talent from the Hell End Academy, Nigerian born and bred but i think he grew up in england but he's being looked at by very many clubs and looks like Arsenal are working tooth and nail to renew his contract the latest fabricio romano has for that boy is going to be delivered here onto your face by rock and david and then we are going to talk about the boy the living miracle to me he's a miracle to me because i never saw balogan explode to this level and he is really exploding and giving Mikel Ateta more and more headache onto his plans of the summer. Now, <clears throat> I have to congratulate Odegaard, Saka, uh, the manager Mikel Ateta, and Aaron Ramsdale for winning the awards of the London Football Awards. And they are triumphant. And that shows you that this season is for Arsenal. It's for Arsenal. And whoever is still a doubting Thomas, you're going to be sat down. It might sound peculiar, but this is what football is all about. Football is unpredicted. And every time you really prepare yourself, you get the results that you've been always yearning for to get. Arsenal prepared itself very well. And the payoffs, all the gifts, all the harvests, all the yields and now started to surface. Now, Bukayo Saka is one of those players that plays each and every game of Arsenal, and it affects him because he needs to be rotated and sometimes rested. That's why nowadays, if Arsenal goes three goals ahead, Mikel Ata takes him off like 20 minutes to the end of the game. Like the game of Fulham, he played 72 minutes and took him off. <clears throat> Um, the game of Everton, I think, also took him off. Every time Arsenal kills off the game, the manager tries to rotate him. And he wouldn't like to be playing like that. He wouldn't like to be playing him like that. He would have loved to sometimes not start him and bring him on as, impact, as an impact substitute or sometimes to play close to 60, 70 minutes. Then he takes him off and obviously gets in 
a player that can equally play to that position. But why is that like that? Because he doesn't have a backup for that player. Now, Plenty Goal has gone ahead. <clears throat> no, this is Christian Falk. Christian Falk. He's a journalist that works for Build in Germany and he's really the first year journalist. One of the first year journalists that we have working in Bundesliga. He has told us that Arsenal still have an interest in Moussa Diabe. The Leverkusen Stars agents are in contact with the club. However, it's worth noting that the Gunners are also interested in Dortmund's Julian Brandit. The club has yet to make a final decision onto the front. Now, talking about talking about Moussa Diabe. To me, I look at Moussa Diabe as a perfect player that could fit into this Arsenal side. That's it. Do you know why? However much, <clears throat> however much at his side, however much at his side <clears throat> of Bayern Leverkusen, he plays as a left attack midfielder or a central forward. I believe he can come in through and obviously do the needful through <clears throat> the middle. Sorry, through the right attacking side of the midfield. And uh, I believe he's one of those players that is really exciting to watch. He has made his debut for the French national team. And I think he's one of those players that you would recon with at Arsenal. Now, he has gone ahead to score very many numbers. And to me, I believe if at all can score very many goals while playing on the left attacking side of the midfield as a left-footed player. You can go ahead and really score very many goals on the right side of the pitch when you are left-footed because it's easy. You just you just chop right and then go for the curling effort. Or you go to the byline and beat a player. His skill set is undoubted. He's a very, very good and talented player. It's not the first time or second time we are hearing this. Arsenal have been following Moussa Diabe from the summer in the January transfer window. They thought of him before they thought about Leandro Trossard, but they thought that they needed a Premier League player and they went in for Leandro Trossard that has really gone ahead to act well for Arsenal. So, if they get in, if they get in uh, this guy, Moussa Diabe, it will be a very good signing. And as I told you, that <coughs> Arsenal are just in need of the following players. They need a right back because they want to get Ben White back to the central defense to compete with Liam Saliba. They need a central defense midfielder. They need a right attack midfielder that is a backup, a backup of Bukayo Saka and they need a center forward. Arsenal are going to go in for like four or five players in the summer and I think Mikel Ateta will likely not to lose out on Moussa Diabe. But for Brandit, it's really going to be another story for me to work on. <clears throat> he plays for Borussia Dortmund. He's an exciting player, left-footed, and he's really exciting to watch. He's electric. You would love not to miss him in the team. And maybe Brandit might find himself having an age over Moussa Diabe because... He's, pro he's proven at the level of the Champions League. And he has taken, he took Borussia Dortmund through the group. But for Moussa Diabe, he never managed and he's now playing in the UEFA Europa League. But all of those two players are really good and great. But to me, I believe Moussa Diabe might be having an age over Brandit, according to me. Because he has been doing this consistently, season in, season out. And he has gone ahead to thrive and shine at the world stage that is Moussa Diabe. So even Fabrizio Romano had to add his word onto this deal to show you that Arsenal is really interested in this player and he want and they want to bring him at the Emirates in the summer. Fabrizio said Arsenal have appreciated Moussa Diabe for a long time. It's almost two years following him, but the same happened but the same happened with other clubs including PSG and Newcastle. Bayern Leverkusen wanted to keep him last summer and in January for this summer it will depend on the club. So as it stands, they might really want to cash in for him according to me. 
they might want to really go in and cash in for him. Do you know why? This is a player that is really growing. You get? He's, <clears throat> I'm told, he's 23 years of age. His contract is expiring in 2025. If at all they are willing to get in the amount of money they want to get out from him, they have to sell him this summer when he's left with two years. You get? We've seen players like like Marcus Thuram, I think also plays in the Bundesliga, not trying to really renew his contract. And if at all they don't cash in for him, that means next summer they'll sell him cheaply. If they are to get 60 million euros out of this player, they are supposed to sell him now. And I believe if Arsenal are serious, this is the right time to go in and really get the player. Having chased him for two complete years, they need to execute this player. Unless otherwise, Ateta has changed his mind. Maybe he goes in for Mark Asensio because Asensio looks like he's going away all branded. But I think Diabe is the real deal. Age, 23 years of age, proven player who can come into that Arsenal side and obviously act as a backup for Bukayo Saka. So, let's leave that at that and let's go to the striking to the striking headache that Mikel Ateta is having. Ateta was planning to go in and bring an experienced player this time now, this time round in the summer. You get he has seen the impact of Leandro Trossard, 28-year-old player proven in the Premier League, and how he's tearing up the Premier League at the Arsenal side. You get? So Jorginho is doing a very good impact at Arsenal. Jakub Kivio, another young player that we expect to really bust or really explode very soon at the Arsenal side. Though his debut never went on well for him, but obviously we expect him to really pick up. But there are things you should understand. One, there is a striker that came from the Hell End Academy known as Flaron Balogan, and he's really tearing up the French League One by storm. He's tearing it into pieces, and obviously, even Fabrizio Romano is going to hate to hint about this young man. I told us last, he has told us that Flaron Balogan continues to have a spub season at L a spub season on loan at Remy, 16 goals 21 years old and top numbers Arsenal picked Remy's as the best loan option with the players agents a decision on his future will be made at the end of the season now the decision on whether to retain him at the club of Arsenal or to really loan him back at Rems or another club that's really high profile will be made by Arsenal at the end of the season now I think this is the headache that every manager would love to have because Ateta asked about the return of Leandro Trossard, the bit of Gabriel Jesus, Edin Ketia is on his way back. Three people that play in the same position are returning and I read two of those are viable. How do you feel about it? He said that's the biggest headache that the manager would always want to have, to be having quality and versatile players in one position. So I think when Farron Balogan comes in through, it's going to be a huge decision for Mikel Ateta to make. Do you keep him at Arsenal? Will he be getting enough playing time? That's the big question. Or you loan him to another team and then you bring in the likes of Dusan Valhovic. Or you cash in for him and really get in like 50 million euros from the player. I tell you, I tell you, if Doe Nunes went for 88 million euros because he was playing in the Champions League and for Ren Balogan is not playing in the Champions League, Arsenal can get close to 40 or 50 million euros if at all they sell for Ron Balogan. And if I told him Arsenal, I'll sell him to a team like Everton, those teams, if at all they can afford, such that I put a buyback clause. That's it. That's it. Because to me, I believe this boy is better than Edin Ketia. <laughs> That's it. Edin Ketia got runs to West Ham and very many other teams that he never tore it apart as this boy is. So I'm thinking of. I'm thinking of I'm thinking of Ateta making a very huge decision on the board of Arsenal. But I think as he's a result or a product of the Hell End Academy, they won't like to lose him. They would love to keep him. That's it. And lastly, let's talk about the 15-year-old wonder talent known as Nwaneri. Nwaneri made his debut when Arsenal was beating Brentford 3-0 at their stadium known as the community stadium by then but right now it changed its name and 
Fabrizio Roman has gone ahead to give us a hint on his next step he wants to take. Highly rated 15 year old in one is attracting spe speculation. I'm not aware of Man City, of whether Man City are into the race. Chelsea FC have always followed top talents, but Arsenal want him to sign a new deal. I'm sure they'll try again and again as they consider Nwaneri as a top talent. So, Mikel Ateta and the board of Arsenal don't want to lose Nwaneri because he's massively talented. If you look at him play, he's really an exciting player, left-footed, and he's a very good forward who plays in the midfield. He can play wide, he can also lead the line, and uh, Mikel Ateta believes that he's one of those players that he will usher into his team very, very soon to get on. But teams like Chelsea are really trying to convince him and really seduce him to join their club. But if I told him Ranieri, I'll just look at Hutchinson. Hutchinson is one of those players that left the Academy of Arsenal and went to Chelsea with lots of promises made to him. But look at him, he's not playing, but he at Arsenal is being trusted by Mikel Ateta. And if I told him the parent of Nwaneri, I decide to stay at Arsenal. He's just 15. And he might find himself even getting alone to the championship to play there and maybe nurture him more and more and more. And if at all he puts pen to paper with Arsenal, I think would have made the best decision. Arsenal and Mikel Ateta have a lot of belief in the player and they wouldn't like to lose him on a free. So guys, that's the first video of our day. Your thoughts on Arsenal identifying Bokayo Saka's backup are welcome in the comment section below. Then, what do you think about Nwaneri? Do you think he's leaving or he's staying at Arsenal? And lastly, what decision would you like Arsenal to make for Florent Balogan? Because I've given you all the options. And what do you think is the best option for Arsenal? I sign out for now. See you later. May the Almighty bless you abundantly. Rock and David remains my name. Don't forget to subscribe, guys. And we want to hit 13,000 subscribers. Guys, thank you very much for watching it through. Thank you for all the love. And I won't betray you. On a daily, I'll be coming in here to read really drop those stories that are really hot.